Bangladesh is a land of dreams, of teeming life and spectacle. This is the Bay of Bengal, the place where the ships of the world come to die. I believe this is the most dangerous job in the world. It's a death trap. Hundreds and hundreds of mighty cargo ships and tankers discarded. Forty thousand workers doing filthy, backbreaking work risking their lives for little more than three dollars a day. Life here is about survival. It's about getting food on the, on the plate, getting kids to school, just so that they might have a better life than your own. Bangladesh is the most densely populated country on earth and one of the poorest. Tanvir Ahmed is now a Sydney doctor, but this is where he spent the first six years of his life. She's telling me that we used to rent two of the little rooms down the bottom here. Unbelievable, it probably hasn't changed that much. It's the same owners and, the, and that owner used to run a shipyard. In my childhood home, there was a real romance about this job. Our landlord was a shipbreaker. Most kids wanted to be policemen or firefighters. I wanted to be a shipbreaker. I wanted my father, who used to come home with a little briefcase, I wanted him to be a shipbreaker. Tanvir's come back with us to Bangladesh and he's about to confront the reality of his childhood dream. But it hasn't been easy. The shipyards are notoriously secretive, so it's taken six months of negotiations to get this far. This is a really sensitive issue for Bangladesh and the industry. They've been shut down before because of negative media attention and they're terrified it's going to happen again. Finally, one of the biggest yards is letting us in. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. So it's all inspiring on, on one level. It does feel like we've just been transported to a totally different planet. <laughs> But down in the mud, it's a very different story. On any given day, there are tens of thousands of these blokes ripping apart these gigantic ships with their bare hands. When you look at their faces, when you look into their eyes, suddenly the reality is very different. These are kids, young men, doing brutal, back-breaking jobs. They're in real danger. Huge bits of scrap metal falling around them. They could get hurt, they could get killed. And they're doing it day in, day out. I'm being shepherded around everywhere because this place is literally a minefield of danger. Right now, they're at the last stroke of letting this huge big crane fall into the sea. It's all a matter of survival. The workers need their jobs, and Bangladesh needs the steel, because it has no iron ore of its own. What? You know, they just simply could not build their infrastructure. They couldn't build their high rises uh, without this, without this, this, these ships being recycled. 
this country would be crippled if it wasn't for the shipbreakers. Charlie Kernigan has been campaigning on behalf of the shipyard workers for the last five years. This is not a place of work. It's a place of suffering and death. It's hell on earth. There's no other way to describe it. Thousands of workers have been injured, killed, maimed, burned to death. The very highest wage is going to be 47 cents an hour. 47 cents to dismantle the largest tankers in the world. These are starvation, miserable wages. This oil tanker has been at sea for 17 years and it's 32 metres high. The only way up is by this flimsy rope ladder and it's just best not to look down. <laughs> has just been left abandoned. It's hard to believe, but in four weeks' time, this tanker will be history. By the time the workers are finished, not a scrap will be left. How do you feel when a new ship arrives in the yard? Bilal is 24, but he started at the shipyards when he was just a kid. He and his brother Roman share this tiny room with their two cousins, aged 13 and 14. All of them work on the ships, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. At least one man dies here every two weeks. Injuries and close shaves like Bilal's are too numerous to count. How much courage do you need to work as a shipbreaker? They work hard and they get hurt and they just throw them out like there's nothing. Like Bilal, most of the shipbreakers come from here in North Bengal, the poorest part of this desperately poor country. Every village has its stories. Here, 15 damaged men have come to tell us of the terrible injuries they suffered on the job. You do some of the most dangerous and some of the hottest work of anybody in the world. 
and the Bangladeshi workers are terrific workers. Nobody should treat you like this so that you're missing a, a foot, missing a leg, missing toes, missing a leg, missing a foot, missing toes, fingers. It's criminal. Why do we allow it? It's so disgusting that every one of us should be shamed and we should cry out. But the dangers don't stop at falling metal and gas explosions. The ships are riddled with toxic heavy metals and asbestos. With no safety gear, the workers are cruelly exposed. I have to say, I am a little bit nervous. I'm going into this ship and it's absolutely riddled with asbestos and toxic fumes. We're currently in the bridge of the ship and there is asbestos everywhere. It looks extreme, but in Australia, this is what I'd have to wear to protect myself. Just one fibre is enough to have devastating effects on the body, and the workers aren't protected at all. the reality when you look closer and you see these kids and other workers and what they're doing throwing themselves into situations full of toxic waste of asbestos and I'm a doctor I know that's gonna kill them it's gonna kill them probably before they're 40 <laughs> There's no doubt profits are huge. Shipyard owners buy a wreck for around $5 million and sell the scrap for 10. Marzan Rahman is the director of the yard where Bilal, his brother and their teenage cousins work. Are there children working in your yard? No. My no. permanent workers, but we've, we've seen them. The contractors do employ sometimes uh, this children worker, but we are continuously working on this issue, not allowing children to work directly in these risky areas. But how can you sleep at night knowing that children are being exposed to things like asbestos, mercury, oil, explosions? It is uh, very, the industry, the industry is risky, but where there is no risk, you'll find risk in all kinds of business. In Australia, it would cost a fortune to demolish these ships. This is the first world, the developed world, taking advantage of these workers in Bangladesh. The fact is that this is all they've got. Their one chance, their only hope of realizing their dreams. <laughs> What life do you hope for? I mean, that this is a rahum. I mean, kastas. For a kiss, we take a zaman, zaman, and for a bari. I'm not a monsai bari. Take the. The taka bosha na yedan. The ganan kasi koi. The taka bosha zomle bari. The ekta dohan dila. Izo mita dila. Kon saasha wat kare guru guru pas palle. Me rahum hai ta zaman zaman bari ta on solbi. Ekta shop na. Ta saar ke sam. Their lives are short and brutal. It's cheap. It's as cheap as life gets here. 
and it, it hits hard uh, because I look at them and part of me thinks, well, it's not impossible, that could have been me. Where are you going to go?